Hi, my name's Dan, and for this Christmas time season, we have Booksack 24.12. Now, before we get into things, there is one breaking change in regards to our requirements for Booksack, and that is that the SIP PHP extension is now required. This is quite a common extension though, so it may already be installed on your system. And if you use one of our Ubuntu scripts to install your Bookstack instance, this will already be installed on your machine. Okay, so the main feature that I've been working on for this release is a new importable zip export format. So I'll take you through how this works. I'm currently here in one of my development instances. So let's go up to my books and then I'm gonna to go to this account department book. Now we can see here, this book has a number of pages. It's got a chapter that has even more pages in it. And then within the description here, we've got a link to the first page. And within this page, an example, we've got an image within here, we've got an attachment, and we've got a link to the attachment here. And we've also got a reviewed at tag up here. So there's a few things going on in this book with some cross references and content within it. So if we go up to the book level, and then if we look at the export menu, we can find we've got a new option in here, portable zip. So I can select this and I'll be downloaded a zip file that contains our book data and all of the pages and chapters within this book, as well as their tags, attachments, and images. So as I mentioned earlier, this is also an import format. So we could import this into the same book like instance and it will essentially be a copy, but we could already do that via the copy action. So as a better example of what this can do, I'm gonna switch over to my development book stack instance. And if I go to books, there's a new import action within here. So I can select that. And here is where you can upload one of those zip files that's been exported from Bookstack. Down here, we can see some pending imports. So imports that have been uploaded, but have not been ran. And for those, you'll only see your own ones unless you have permissions to manage application settings. So you're essentially an admin, in which case you'll see pending imports for all users. But we want to import that content that we just exported from another instance. So I'm gonna select to browse, find that zip file, and then validate import and that zip file is now uploaded to our Booksack instance, ready to import. But before that occurs, we'll see this screen where we get a nice overview of exactly what we're due to import. If you're importing just a page or chapter export, it's at this level that you'll then select which book you're gonna be importing that into. But we're importing a book here, so we don't have to select any parent item. But yeah, so we're seeing a nice overview of all the different pages, the chapters with its pages. And for each of these bits of content, we can see the attachments, images, and tags that have been attached to this that are due to be imported as well. So everything looks good here, so I'm gonna to choose to run the import. And there we go. We've got that whole book imported from a completely different instance into this one. And as part of this, a lot of care has been taken to, as best as possible, manage the links and attachments and files and cross-references as part of this import-export process to try and get these zip files as portable as possible, especially when considering, you know, importing and exporting cross-instances. So for example, we had this link here in the description that goes to the first page. Now, our other instance was on a completely different URL, but the process has managed that. It's recognized as a cross-reference to something within the same scope within the export because the page was part of the book. So this link now is changed and will refer to the page that's within this imported book. So I'll click that and we're still in the same book stack instance and it's gone to our first page here. And here we can see it is brought over the image. We have our attachment up here. We have our tag up here. And we had this link in here that refers to our attachment. So although the attachment has been re-imported into this system and it's got a different ID, that reference has remained from the page to the attachment because it was part of the same export. So we could click on this and we download that attachment or we'll find from this instance, not from the other instance. And of course, all of our chapters and the pages within that have come over as well. And look, Looks like this one had a link as well to the first page within this chapter and that works fine as expected. So all of this is built around a portable zip file format that we're defining, which is essentially a custom format, but it's based on fairly simple and open technologies and it's designed to be easily understood. So here within the Bookstack source, we've got this format fully defined for developers, including details on the stability and the individual properties that are supported and what the requirements are for each data object within this format, just to ensure that this format is as portable as possible that is not specific just to Bookstack so that developers could create tooling that then works with this file format without too much work. And I should note this isn't intended to be a backup format at all. For backups you should still follow our normal backup guidance just because this doesn't include a lot of the metadata and other related objects around the content that we're managing. So things like comments and revisions. But that said I'm quite excited about the potential possibilities for which this new format could be used for. For example users could 
share books that they've created from their instance and share it with others on the internet or you could have maybe like a staging bookstack instance and then you promote content to a production bookstack instance via this export import process or developers could target it as an import format to create converters from other platforms to target to this as portable zip file format which can then be imported directly into bookstack and as part of this file format it also solves a lot of the complexities that'll be involved in getting a page with all its related like images and attachments and things so that will help in external applications like maybe mobile apps it's now easier to kind of bring a whole page and its related content in at once and then you could also just use it to create tooling around more advanced templates so developers could script things from other platforms to create more dynamic templates that are then brought into bookstack so yeah this opens up quite a lot of opportunities by having kind of the stable target importable format so i'm excited to see where this goes so one major limitation right now is that there's no api endpoints for these portable zip import exports so this was something I was planning to do initially within the first release of but I want to let this new feature just settle a little bit just to ensure we've got the process right, that we've got the format right, just because I don't want to be introducing breaking changes for our API. And I'd rather just that this format matures a little bit just so we're confident before adding it to the API itself. So next up, I want to talk about the new WYSIWYG editor. So we added this within our last release. It was in an alpha state and it's going to continue to be in an alpha state for this release, but it has received quite a number of significant improvements. So for one, as we're seeing now, it now works absolutely fine in dark mode. And then there's been various improvements to the formatting and control of various elements. So for example, the nesting and unnesting of list items have been made much more stable and aligned with our old editor. And the collapsible blocks have been made much more stable now. And then the about editor button has been added to align with the old editor, where you can see the shortcuts and licensing of the editor. And everything's been made to adapt properly and work on mobile now. So if I go to a mobile-like view, the editor UI no longer kind of stacks up and takes over most of the screen it all kind of neatly adapts and compared to our old existing WYSIWYG editor where the toolbar is reduced down quite significantly I've taken the approach here just to have everything on here so you've got a fully featured editor but you uh, scroll along the side to see everything within the editor toolbar and upon those changes there has been a lot of time spent in the background merging in the existing kind of lexical code base and the customizations that we've been making just to keep things organized so it can be developed further into the future now a couple of improvements for developers that are using our REST API the first comes for search so the search all endpoint will now return details of the parent item. So just simple details, but for example, for this chapter here, we're also getting the book ID name and slug. And then for the page in this search results, we get the details for the book and the parent chapter. So this just saves you having to perform other requests up via the IDs to get these details. Now you can just get them and display them in a list in the same way that the book stack search results do. And in a similar manner, the books list endpoint now also returns cover image details. So you no longer have to go and fetch the details of each book to then find out the details of their cover image. So thanks to Rashad Khan here for helping to contribute some of these features. Now a quick improvement for those using LDAP authentication. Before you could select an LDAP attribute to use for the user's display name in Bookstack, but you could only select one item. So for example, if your LDAP system only provided first name and last name and no whole complete name, you'd have to choose one or the other. But now Bookstack allows you to define multiple attributes as we're seeing here in this example. So you can do LDAP display name attribute equals and then define multiple attributes separated with a pipe and Bookstack will attempt to fetch each of the attributes listed in here and then combine them separated with a space. And a thanks to Matthew Leboff for helping contribute this feature. Now, as usual, the translations in Bookstack have received a bunch of updates since the last release. So a big thank you to everyone listed here that's contributed to our translations since that last feature release. And now on to next steps. Now, the late part of this year, we had PHP 8.4 released, which Bookstack is now tested against and seems to work with fine. But we're getting a lot of deprecations for this version of PHP. And then to address those deprecations, we really need to move on from some of the versions of the libraries that we're using, so mainly the version of Laravel that we're using. But to do that, we would have to then drop our support for PHP 8.1 and set the minimum version to 8.2. So this is something we'd usually do a few months into the year, but I'll probably do this sooner rather than later. So next release is probably going to be focused more on a maintenance release where we're updating our framework and supporting the change in PHP version support. 
And then I would also like to find some time to add some more examples for our PDF export command. So we added this earlier in this year that allows you to define other commands for handling the conversion to PDF. But at the moment, we've only got one option there, which I put a warning against because I don't recommend it just because it can use network and file system resources and access. So I've been meaning to do this a while and I've got some ideas and how we can provide some other options. So I just want to sit down and provide some options that we'd be more comfortable recommending. And of course, I want to continue our work on the new WYSIWYG editor. So hopefully complete off uh, the last few things that we're missing from this editor and then get it into a more beta status. So we can start just recommending it a little bit more to get it a bit more tested before eventually pushing this as the default, maybe later in 2025. And as we move into 2025, I will be doing a kind of Booksack in 2024 blog post soon, much like we have done here in previous years, just to give an update in terms of the project itself and the finances and to have a look back at what we've achieved in the last year. But that's everything for this video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful Christmas time and a happy new year.